How's it going? I am Glenn, and I'm going to be running A Link to the Past 100%. Um, this is a really cool category. I've been running this game for a few years now, and this is probably my favorite category of the game. And I actually uh, just got world record in it recently, so I'm pretty excited to show it off here today. Uh, and I'm joined by two commentators, if you guys want to introduce yourselves. Hi, my name is Tosh, so I've been a glitch hunter for this game for a few years. Uh, I've run a few categories, but not too much. I'm Chex Human. I also run this game, especially glitched categories. All right, well, if we're ready, um, I'll give a countdown then. Uh, three, two, one, go. Good luck, Glenn. Thank you. All right. So, so this is, oh. you want to go um, introduce the category? Yeah, sure. I'll, 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 I'll do it. Yeah. All right. So um, as we mentioned, this is 100%. Uh, so what 100% means for Link to the Past is that we have to get the maximum upgrade of every item. We have to get all 20 hearts. We have to get the half magic upgrade. And we have to get uh, full dungeon completion, which is all bosses defeated and all pendant crystals obtained. And because this is uh, with major glitches, uh, we are going to have to adhere to a source requirement as well. But the major glitches are going to allow us to do this uh, a lot faster than uh, you normally would playing this game. So, in fact, we're you know not even going to take too long to get into them um, after we get up into the castle here. Yeah. yeah, within two minutes we're already starting our first glitch, which is going to be uh, uh, something we call... EG, which kind of stands for Exploration Glitch. Basically, it means we're going to be under the floor and exploring the underworld, and it's mainly built like a quilt, so we'll just be able to move from room to room to room uh, with a lot of speed. It's kind of the oldest uh, glitch state that we know of. I don't even know if we know like who the first person ever found it was, <laughs> but it's extremely powerful and lets us bypass a lot of areas, especially as we've found more and more glitches in the game. Just keeps getting more and more powerful. But uh, the way we're going to do that is over in this next room here, there's a staircase next to a rail. And rails are very small and have not the best collision. So we're just going to uh, use some pause buffers to move one frame at a time into this railing to hopefully get around this little ledge trigger here. Uh, it is pretty precise. Uh, the buffers themselves, we only we have to do it uh, almost frame perfectly. We we can be early, but we can't be late. If we're late, then we're, we'll wind up moving two frames at a time, and then that just screws up the clip and we'll pop out a little bit. So we're trying to move eight pixels into the rail, but it's a lot harder than it seems, even when you're experienced with buffering. Yeah, oh, we buffer okay. Link's movement, meaning we can move one frame at a time, and we can do it safely, too, by um, being able to hold the select button, uh, which instantly brings up the uh, oh, pause menu. Like, this trick is really frustrating. <laughs> what makes this one extra frustrating is that we actually have to do one diagonal movement, then we have to do one neutral, we have to let go of the D-pad, <laughs> and then we have to do another D diagonal movement and just do that over and over until okay. we're far enough in. There we go. We're around the ledge trigger. If that's a place to get so, caught up in this run, it's honestly right there, even though it's two minutes in. <laughs> yeah. But uh, as you can see, we, we jumped through the wall, which put us on the lower layer. We're still on the lower layer now, and you saw that Glenn jumped into a hole. Uh, so funny thing about jumping in this game is that it doesn't complete unless you land on the ground, and we didn't. We went into a hole, so now we have a stored jump. Uh, that stored jump will activate when, the next time we get put into a knockback animation, which will be when we take damage. Uh, and we want to do that a little bit after we get Zelda out of prison here. Yeah, Glenn is using a safer strat uh, to keep his distance from the ball and chains guard, which could easily uh, strike Link. And uh, we want to not take damage right now. Yeah, that guy's really mean. But after getting Zelda, we get a like a checkpoint here, so we're gonna respawn right in the cell after saving and quitting, and it'll just respawn the enemies. So then I can just get hit. Luckily, our store jump is still there, so we take damage, we fall under the floor, and now we can see the true power of uh, the quilt-like makeup of the underworld, where we're just able to walk around all of these other barriers, including this other lower ground area that's to our to the right side of the screen here. We're Right in the middle, kind of underneath where the uh, arrow counter is currently, and just walking around. You'll be able to see me a little bit here. There I am. The di 
<laughs> the, the dialogue is Zelda tells Link to return to the throne room to find a secret passage, and we immediately disobey that. No, we found the secret yeah, passage. Yeah, we're going straight to the sanctuary. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to the end point of it. We don't have time to go through the this sewers. Is, this is the secret secret <laughs> passage. We see some secret chests that we do not have access to right now. And we don't even open in this one because they don't contain any of our major inventory items. So here is the cutscene of bringing Zelda to Sanctuary. It just starts on a timer after entering the room, so we don't have to go in or do anything. We just have to be in here for a certain amount of time. We do have to load the priest, though, who's up there in the upper right corner. So that's, that's he is important. <laughs> So we do a quick save and quit here so that we can respawn at the house. Just a bit of fast travel. And we're going to head over Next to Eastern Palace. Is... Eastern Palace, so, go ahead. Yeah, a, a lot like the uh, thin rails that we kind of clipped around in the castle, uh, slopes in this game also have uh, not the greatest collision. Or they're usually pretty good, but when you can move one frame at a time and really exploit how they work, we can do some... Uh, <laughs> Pretty interesting things with them, including what we're going to try to do here, which is uh, jump off the bottom of the screen. And now the, the screen stays the same collision the entire way, so when we jump down, we're actually wrapping around to the top of it, which is around where the dungeon entrance is, and there we are. That was really clean. Now we're in Eastern Palace. <laughs> nice to just clip. Yeah. Shoutouts to Yuzuhara. Uh, up next in this cannonball room, we have uh, sort of a new application of a glitch that we've known for a while. It's called Quadrant Glitch, which is when we release the spin and move across Oops. the middle of a room on the same frame. Uh, it, it does a double update of which half of the room that thinks Link is in, and that causes very weird things to happen with doorways, like yeah. this one. I mean, this is pretty weird. It, yeah. yeah. And as you can see, the camera isn't locking properly at the edge of the room, and the uh, camera is broken for a little bit. But uh, through careful movements and uh, camera corrections, we can actually get everything back to normal. But a lot <laughs> it's not always easy to be able to do this. Luckily, we've found some setups to make this possible, such as if the camera were any lower here, we wouldn't get the transition we want here and we wouldn't have all these sprites that we can now interact with with everything being nice and stable. Yeah, nice so. and all back to normal. It's funny how the, yeah. we know it's normal because Link slams into the anti-fairies. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, there, there's a lot of different ways to get desynced in this game, and one of those is being desynced from sprites, and when they're back, we're usually pretty happy. <laughs> yeah, usually we want to interact with sprites. Except the few times we don't which is almost never, but... Yeah, we finally get a little bit of normal gameplay all the way up to the boss here. <laughs> yeah, this upper floor is mostly just combat and action rooms. There's not really any good way to skip this because we don't really have a lot of items yet. But if we did, we could get straight to our most, but we don't have the items, so... We gotta walk. Nice. We also want that bow, which is part of 100% completion, of course. And it allows us to take out these red Igors and then quickly take down the boss, Armos Knights. Yeah, those, those red Igors are only vulnerable to the bow, so we, we do need it to be able to get through that room. And the bow is the best item to fight these guys. Now you'll see uh, Glan bring up the lamp here and use it twice while the pendant is falling. This is actually important. It's setting up a very specific value of memory that will be important later. Yeah. <laughs> but after the dungeon, we get a nice health and magic refill, and we're on our way to the Pegasus Boots, which are uh, one of the nicest items in the game to have in terms of going fast. But they let you run around, and uh, instead of using our sword and one-frame movement to get through cliffs, we can just use something called dash buffering, which is pressing A and a direction at the same time, and we can just go through slopes yeah, that way. And bomb clips as well. We're going to grab some bombs in here, yeah. too, in the back room. Um, there's a bit of a, a trope in the Zelda series of speedrunning where bombs are very abusable, and this game is no exception. So 
grab some bombs, some money. Uh, we do need some money to do some of the like 100% specific stuff uh, coming up in a little bit. Uh, but first we're going to be grabbing a few really important items for the rest of the run. Uh, we're going to grab that heart container now since it gives a full refill and it's going to be really useful for this section where health is at a bit of a premium. Uh, yeah, we're going to take a little trip through Lost Woods. Uh, those of you who may know the game know that we're kind of dashing past some uh, relatively easy heart pieces. Don't worry, we will get them. They are uh, just faster gotten in other ways. But first we're going to go pick up the mushroom that's just kind of lying around out here. And then we're going to go uh, get a heart piece down a hole here, and we're going to do a bomb clip. Now, bomb clips are uh, a pixel precise placement of a bomb and then dashing into the explosion so that the bomb knockback knocks us through a slope, which is very handy here since we're on the lower layer. That'll actually just bring us right into EG. It's also nice of the NPC to stop Link's movement. Yeah, he's perfectly positioned for the setup. <laughs> <laughs> now, one thing that's interesting to note is uh, the game has a dungeon ID system, which is basically whenever you enter the underworld, there is an ID that is assigned to where you currently are. And right now, we're currently in a cave. And interestingly, uh, when we have the big key from the ball and chain guard, we can actually just open up all big key doors and chests that we want while in a cave. So we can bypass a lot of big keys by going in through a cave state. There are a few other big keys that work, but uh, getting the one from the Hyrule Castle is pretty much required in most runs anyway, and it's just very convenient that it works for cave state as well. Additionally, you'll see that we're just kind of walking through small key doors. They only care, key doors only care if you have zero keys. If you have zero keys, they don't open. But the funny thing about cave state is that it sets your keys to 255, which then tells the game, don't draw the key counter. <laughs> But since that's not zero, we can open up key doors. Oops. Now next in here, we're going to be using the Cane of Samaria. We didn't mention it, but the Cane of Samaria is the most broken item in the entire game, by far. And we're actually uh, using the Cane of Samaria while being at the top of this doorway, doing something we call a Samaria Transition Corruption, which actually kind of moves us up that underworld quilt one time for every single time we tap up into the block in the doorway. And we just did that seven times. So we moved pretty far along that quilt, and we're doing so just so we can get over to the hook shot here. Now, one of the other uh, effects of doing those Samaria transition corruptions is that it broke our camera going up and down. But that's not a bad thing here, because it turns out that right next to Swamp is Tower of Hera. Specifically, right next to the big chest. So we can just go ahead and grab the Moon Pearl as well. Remember, we're still in cave state, so we can go ahead and open this stuff. So now we, we just got the Samaria, the Hookshot, and the Moon Pearl. All very, very useful items for this entire And room. one extra bomb for safety. I did pick Sanctuary, okay. Uh, so there I used... Nice hook dash. Yeah. I can let you explain <laughs> that. Usually we could simply dash out the door, but instead Glan used a hook dash or an item dash using... Uh, w y and A on the same frame, and it puts Link into a glitch state where when he touches a staircase, he can run very fast with simply using the D-pad. Yeah, he, he basically gets stuck in the dashed state because of walking off the stairs, and he's just able to move at full speed, even going diagonally, which is very nice. Uh, you did see that we did another screen wrap uh, to get into this cave where the old man is here. We're actually going to rescue him because he has two very important things to him. He has the magic mirror, which is very good for uh, traversing between the light and dark worlds, but he also has a save point that he unlocks on the mountain. Both of these things are very nice to have. He's got a little bit of RNG between these dead rocks and the boulders. Death Mountain is a very fitting name. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because this is where all your runs die. Yeah. Or Link also dies. So we do another screen wrap. Right here, here we're doing another, another screen wrap using that uh, hook dash state, and using the Tower of Hera. So one thing that's kind of interesting is that there's kind of two types of entrances to the underworld that we call kind of primary and secondary. Uh, when you enter or exit a, actually when you exit a primary underworld location, 
it puts you, it sets where you are on the overworld, but on the secondary one, it doesn't. It preserves where you were, which will be important later and we'll point that out. Here we go with another bomb clip uh, to get up this cliff. And then we're going to do a little bit of clipping to uh, get off of Death Mountain. Yeah, which we call Death Mountain Descent. This is one version of it. There's a lot of clips that we can do, but this is one of them. And it's very convenient for 100% because it brings us right close to this hard piece. So we can just jump down and get it. Normally you need the magic cave to go through the cave there, but we can just, you know, jump down the cliff. That They didn't really think of that, I guess. Yeah, we got a few things to do in the Dark World town here, including the uh, chest game. Now, the chest game has a couple of things first. Before we actually get into the chest game itself, we need to talk about that value that we set back at Eastern when we got the green pendant. That value is called the Ancilla Index. Now, Ancilla are basically items that Link creates from his inventory. There's basically 10 slots of those things, five of which are mainly used for most of the items and five that are used for supplementary effects like sparkles around your sword. And uh, with a high index, which we got from using the lamp, we can send some of these main items into those back slots and having them there does some very interesting things especially with the hook shot as you will see oh, right here no we won't <laughs> oh no that was a slot eight block yep. wasn't it okay i think i'm gonna just go pick up the boomerang normally then well dang it's okay we'll see it later it's not the only time yeah <laughs> yeah there's a lot more to do with uh ancilla to do yeah. in this run in the meantime, we're in the middle of chest game, which is completely RNG, and in the Japanese 1.0 version, which we're playing on, uh, there's a bug where you can only get the heart piece in the second chest, and it's a 1 in 8 chance. And it is completely unmanipable. Yeah, as Glenn is well aware, <laughs> as during his practice this week, he had a world record for the number of chest game tries before he yeah. got the heart piece, which was 84. Yes. It's a 1 in 8 <laughs> chance, by the way. <laughs> How long yeah, did that take? Over RNG in this? 15 minutes or so? It took almost it was 18 like 17 minutes. 17 or more, yeah. But uh, RNG in this game is not manipulatable by humans. It actually uses a register in the game uh, during the process of drawing the graphics. It kind of relates to the pixel being drawn on the screen on each and every frame. And whenever the RNG is called, it kind of picks that up. So anytime you have any different number of instructions in getting to a point, you'll have a different RNG value. So there's there's no human possible way to manipulate RNG in this game. Although I guess while we're stuck waiting for the heart piece, let's get a couple donations. Oh, perfect. I was just about to ask, actually. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, a, hmm. it's, of course it's going to happen on the next attempt, but you know, we'll, we'll get in one anyway. <laughs> Uh, first of all, you all are doing amazing on the uh, incentives for Pokemon Legends Arceus, by the way, because we're already almost a quarter of the way to the glitch exhibition, and we are over $10,000, over $11,000 for the um, Arceus and Volo Fight exhibition. So keep getting those in. Plus, you can also name Cyndaquil. So um, awesome for that. <laughs> and then let's get in a $150 donation from Jayco, who says... Missed the two million, but always love Zelda. Let's go! We have a two hundred dollar donation <laughs> from Mike Lundy, who says, "Hey, yeah." <laughs> if if you want more of that, you got to play the GB. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Better at Navi than I am doing a, a Link impression. But you know, <laughs> if you like, want, want a, a few more while we're. Yeah, okay. oh, yeah, keep it going. Oh, never mind. We just got the heart piece. We're good. <laughs> I told you. I lost count of how many tries that was. That was a lot. <laughs> One in eight chance, everybody. Now I'm going to go get the red Still. boomerang here. Uh, this chest is weird. Normally, like you're supposed to get the red boomerang by upgrading it, the blue one with the fairy. But this chest actually has it if you don't have the blue boomerang, which is a thing because technically you can miss getting the blue boomerang. Um, now it's time to enter game. Thieves yeah, Town. Yeah, in, in Thieves Town, we're going to go into EG, and it's going to be similar to what we did in the castle going around the ledge, but because this rail is a bit further away from the stairs, it's a lot easier. Yeah, I can just jam myself in there and go. 
and that gives us. And now we're going to get into uh, a couple of other things. Well, now we're getting uh, the the heart piece up on Spectacle Rock, but we're going to start doing uh, more of those ancilla based shenanigans. Uh, one of which we we call Weird Shot, which is basically telling the hookshot to interact with things on the opposite layer that Link is on. Which is funny because that functionality exists in the game. It's just they uh, didn't want to use it, or I. It, it exists. It's something that was specifically coded in the game, but uh, was, uh, I guess, abandoned during development. But lucky for us, it still exists, so we can we can activate it. We actually do that by getting a bomb in those back slots and then using the hook shot in, uh, in a related slot that's what we call five slots away. So you see in this room, uh, Glenn will set up that misslotted bomb. I gotta do that because I got slot eight before. Yeah. It's helpful to fill up slots using the beams of the Samaria block. Alright. And I can just grab the there chest with the hook shot from underneath and I'm back out. Yeah, so that big key uh, is actually part of Ganon's tower. It's it's in the room. However, whenever you get a key, it's applied to your current dungeon. And right now the game thinks we're in Thieves Town, so now we have a Thieves Town big key. And we got a red mail. So that allows us to get <laughs> Yeah. Red Mail is very nice. Uh, it does reduce damage across the board on a lot of things. There are a few things that it doesn't, uh, and that's just due to how the game interprets damage. It's done through tables rather than equations or anything, which we'll get into later on that. Uh, but now we're going to do a hook push to go into EG, just kind of go right through the floor. Just drop right down Aided there. by that Samaria block in the slot nine. Now we're doing something we call an EG kick. There are certain rooms in the underworld that have both layers completely merged together, and if you're on the lower layer, it just brings you back up. And so we use that uh, to go into Palace of Darkness here. There just happens to be one of those uh, rooms nearby, and this gets us very close to the hammer. And since we have the big key, again, we can just grab the hammer and get out of here. The mirror is useful to return. But we're not done with these yet. No, now we still have to turn back these. to the thieves' entrance. So we get to skip a little bit more of the dungeon here. Um, part of this dungeon is that we do need to blow open a hole in the floor in the attic of this dungeon, but uh, we can do that faster by not going upstairs. We instead can use a weird shot to pull ourselves out of EG, going from the lower layer to the upper off of that pot. Really all we need is a hookable object and enough space to make the ancilla we need to make the glitch happen. Nice. Uh, here we have to kill all the enemies because we don't have a glove so we can't lift that big gray square in the middle. <laughs> so nice of the developers to give an alternate route. Okay, he almost never does that. <laughs> <laughs> the shocking Bari. Got Bari blocked. So we're going to go over here and grab the Disguised Blind. And then we'll be heading back into EG again. This is a really neat part of the run. Yeah. Normally we would take the Maiden into the boss room. Um, and that's not exactly... We don't go the normal way, <laughs> basically. Well, she doesn't like going upstairs to where the bomb hole is, but we're going to take her there anyway. She doesn't like the stairs, but we can pull her out from under the floor if we want. Uh, there, we're actually in the room where the hole is located, and we're using a bomb from under the floor to actually open it, which works. Uh, and then, did we get, get it? it. Uh. Yeah, we're, we're trying another weird shot here. Uh, incidentally, this hole that we create with the uh, bomb does lead to the boss room. Uh, it is connected in that fashion. So if we can if we can get out of here, I, we'll be able to fall right into the boss okay, room. I don't know what's going on. I think the boomerang stuck, so I'm just going to go there normally. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know what happened there. That's too bad, but at least we did blow open the uh, attic hole, which does save in the menu. I guess I could have transitioned and tried again, but... Yeah, it, it's hard to tell what's exactly going on considering we're under the floor yeah. there. <laughs> and sometimes these ancilla glitches fail for uh, 
It's almost RNG, but not quite. Seemingly no reason. All right. Yeah. Blind is not a scripted fight anymore. Blind simply takes nine hits, and no major glitches runners are familiar with the script. Uh, this script is slightly different um, when we fall down from above. Mm -hmm. I don't even have a script, actually. <laughs> just kind of wing it. <laughs> yeah, just, I mean, I had to wing it the there because I messed up. But <laughs> <laughs> And uh, that's Thieves so, Town done. We're good for some more donations. Perfect. Okay. We are... Oh, you're doing so well with the incentives, everybody. Okay, we have $815 from Zebra and Friends. That's amazing. Aww. And they say... Hi, Glenn. Your Glenn stands. <laughs> Wanted to take a moment and wish our biggest frog enthusiast good luck and let you know that we're super proud of you. It's amazing you set two new world records in the same week for this game, the run itself, and also in the worst chess game luck ever. <laughs> Surely it can't be that bad today, right? No, it also wasn't shout anywhere out to near that bad. <laughs> for the expert commentary. <laughs> All right, next up, we just have a few little loose ends to clean up here. Uh, we do need to grab the flute, which is a nice fast travel item. It's just hanging out in this little grove nearby. We do have to dig it up, go, but luckily, uh, there's a guy here that has a shovel to give us. The the flute boy went to Dark World somehow, and he's trapped here. So, yeah. It's not really clear if what we see here in the light world is a ghost image of him or something. I'm not entirely sure because he just kind of disappears after yeah. a little bit and makes the woodland critters scatter. I'm not sure. But we skipped that cutscene by picking it up on top of the return portal. Saves a, a few seconds. Yeah, we don't have time to listen to that whole song. There's a nice little frame saver with the mirror transition. Uh, Glan was able to line up and hit a certain pair of pixels that always shortened that transition time by 30 frames or so. About half a second. Yeah, we we'll trying to do that in other places too. And now we have another RNG mini game, the dig game. So in this game, the first 24 digs do not count for trying to find the heart piece. So we have to dig 24 times before we even get a chance at it. After that, it's a one in 32 chance on each dig for it to be the heart piece. If you're executing pretty well, you can get 13 or 14 more digs on top of that before the timer runs out, which winds up meaning that each dig game is roughly a one in three chance. Easy. Working. And we get first try. Right, Easy. Right. Easiest <laughs> game of my life. Yeah. There is another mini game immediately after this, but this one we can actually kind of cheat. We clip out of bounds and mirror specifically so we land on top of this stump, grab the heart piece, and skedaddle. Yeah. If we don't skedaddle, the guy there yells at us for cheating. <laughs> and we can't escape unless we save and quit. <laughs> the rules don't say no teleporting. Yeah. I think I played it pretty fair. Next up, we got ourselves the Smithy Frog. Frog. Somehow is able to create a sword that's better than the Master yeah. Sword. This is the best <laughs> part of the game that has the frog on screen. I have to get hit here for something coming up in just a minute. And the, uh, yeah, we, we earned the tempered sword here from the blacksmith. And the, and a fun fact, the smiths will temper anything other than the tempered sword and, and, uh, gold sword. Yeah. They'll even tempered, they'll even temper the, uh, the thin air because you can get tempered sword if you've never collected <laughs> yeah. the sword in the game yet. <laughs> It's, it's a bit of an odd design decision, but it's really, really fortunate for us that it's the case, because otherwise we'd have to like always get the Master Sword every single run, every category. Yeah, and it's also given rise to a couple of other categories, like Maximum Swords, where we temper it three different times. <laughs> yeah. So in order to get the Tempered Sword after giving them our sword, we have to do a screen transition before they're done. So we take that opportunity to grab some stuff from Kakariko here. Uh, we're going to be clearing out the south end of town and we'll be doing the north end later. Yeah, we, we do have to return to this area for other parts of it, so it's just faster. 
We do need to activate the flute, though, because that makes it easier to get yeah. back here. And then later we'll flute right back to this spot, and then we go north. So immediately after this, we have something called hook shopping, which is a variation of hook pushing, which we have been using to go under the floor mostly. Uh, but in this case, we're actually using the shop to change Link's state while the hook shot is uh, extending. And in doing that, the hook shot gets stuck, as we will see in just a moment. So while it's stuck, we can actually activate it if uh, we fill up every other slot for items, and then the hookshot just carries us the distance that it would have normally, but Link is now in a completely different spot, and that carries us right to the wall. Yeah. And as mentioned earlier, this is on the secondary map, so we're going to leave here, and it's going to bring us back to where we originally entered. So, now we're just back in Kakariko. Yeah, and actually that fact will be very important in just a moment immediately after you get the uh, Tempered Sword because we're going to do a big set of collection with uh, Hook Pushing. There's a whole bunch of rooms that are nearby that have a bunch of heart pieces and other things that we need. And let's get into how it yeah, works. Yeah, and this is also a very difficult so, segment of the run. This is probably the hardest segment of the whole run. Yeah, we actually have to be very careful about the amount of magic we use because it's we want to have a very low amount when we're done and we pretty much get that thanks to all that we have to do. So the way that hook pushing works, at least in most of the rooms that we do it here, is we create a Samaria block in slot 9. Now this has the interesting property of telling the hookshot to look at different values. Uh, one at a time, really. It just decreases by one every single frame, basically corresponding to what slot it's going to look at. And we tell it to go to zero, mostly. But sometimes we have to set up memory in different ways for different situations, depending on how much space we have. As you see, we're using bow and uh, boomerang and all kinds of stuff. We get a nice bouncing block. And again, we get to fly. By the way, don't forget to grab a green potion yeah. here. <laughs> just for safety. Uh, just in case things go wrong in the next screen, we won't be able to refill our magic, and it would be a lot better to be able to refill it real quick, even if we have to wind up spending it more later. Yeah. But thanks to uh, this, we're actually in the Pyramid Fairy room right now. She's giving us the silver arrows, and we'll also get the gold sword here, uh, which are very powerful upgrades for combat, making a lot of fights much, much easier. Mm -hmm. Although, even with Tempered, they were much easier. It's a bit of a funny thing. Like, it does... Uh the, which fairy you get, this one or the Light World one, actually depends on what world you're in, not what room you're in, but this is actually the Pyramid Fairy room on top of us being in Dark World, so... Kind of just perfectly works out like that. Yeah. You see that uh, Samaria block in the middle of the screen? That thing is in slot 9, which means that we are going to be doing another hook push here. We're actually going to be going into EG, uh, and basically that happens whenever a whenever the hook shot stops moving us, but we don't hit a transition, there's a certain value that the game looks at, and if that's non-zero, we go under the floor. Which is very helpful, because right next to here, we've got the uh, spike cave, which normally requires hammer and glove and a lot of health or potions, but instead we're just going to pull ourselves out of EG using a weird shot, which is again that five-slot relation between the hook shot and a bomb that we placed while under the floor. Now, after this, we're going to do a stuck push, which is just like the hook shot, except using a hook shot in the back slots to change Link's state, which then gets the hook shot stuck again, and we use that to go up into the library. Nicely done. That was very clean. Yeah. <laughs> it's redemption for the chest game push and the Thieves Town thing. Yeah, as you can see, as long as there's hookable objects, we can do almost anything we want going in yeah. between layers or going through walls with <laughs> mist slotting. So I just tossed away all my remaining magic to the lamp for a very specific reason. Um, this, yet another yeah. Samaria glitch. If you use the cannon <laughs> Samaria when you don't have magic and then quickly switch to the mushroom or the powder, it just uses the powder. And it also actually winds up setting your subpixel to zero constantly, which then lets you move two pixels per frame going north. Normally you only walk at one, one and a half pixels per frame. So it's just another little oddity on top of everything else that it's doing. That's such yeah. a neat property to give Link a speed boost. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, with the Cane of Samaria, we use the whole buffalo. 
so now that we did fake powder, I'm gonna go get the actual magic powder. Yeah, it is the maximum upgrade for that inventory slot, so we do have mm -hmm. to do it. And I'm gonna go ahead and drink my potion now. I do need to have full magic uh, after if we this. Weren't, yeah, if we weren't worried about safety, we could kill that green buzz blob there for a full magic drop. But for safety, we went ahead and got the green potion. So now we're actually going to pick up a blue potion. This one is not for safety. Uh, this is part of a glitch that we'll do much later in the run, towards the end. Yeah. So you got a little bit Maybe more collection left it. before we finally head to the next dungeon. And this is a pretty weird thing. If you want to explain what's going on or try to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so just like what we did uh, to get to the hook shop, we did what was called a Samaria transition corruption. Uh, we did that in a northern door to move northern on that quilt. Uh, well, here we're at a southern door, but we're moving eastward on that quilt. And we actually picked up what is known as the Mimic Cave heart piece, which you normally need the hammer and mirror to reach. Uh, but we just pull it out of the dam because when we do that uh, Samaria transition corruption, it loads certain properties of the other rooms, which include what is contained in chests. So we get to pull that out for free. Now, if we actually went to the Mimic Cave after this, that chest would be open because uh, the game actually saves certain values into the save data, like which doors you've opened, which chests you've opened, and it's applied per room in the underworld. Yeah. Since we were able to load that room with the transition corruption, and then we open the chest, the chest applies for that. And that is why it is considered to meet source requirement, because it does actually leave the proper chest open afterwards. And if we went back to the dam again, that chest would be closed, and we could open it for the normal contents. So effectively, we kind yeah, of are the, opening yeah. the proper chest, just in the wrong place. Yeah. <laughs> this game is weird. <laughs> <laughs> you could say that again. This game is very this weird. This game is weird. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, you're, you're fine. <laughs> to quote uh, a wise man known as Super yeah, Scudge, the... game's weird, man. Let me know when you have time for donations, because I have so many. <laughs> Uh, you could probably yeah, get a couple we, we will. now, I think. <laughs> okay, awesome. Yeah, maybe, maybe a couple now. Okay, all right, let's get in one right now. We have $10,000 from Fangamer. Jeez. Fangamer coming in once again saying, hey, everybody, Fangamer here. Wow, 2 million raised so far is amazing to see, but we want to see how much higher it can go. Here's a little more to increase that total made possible by everyone who has shopped the Fangamer AGDQ 2023 collection. Until the end of event, 100% of the profit from sales of GDQ merch supports Prevents Cancer Foundation. You've still got some time to pick up a souvenir while contributing to a great cause. Find the full lineup at fangamer.com slash GDQ. Awesome. Nice. Yes, thank you, Fangamer. It's amazing. <laughs> thank you so much, yeah. I think we got time for one more. Awesome, because, it, oh my gosh, we have an additional $10,000 donation. <laughs> it's incredible. Um, this is from Reaper Hulk, who says, deciding when to donate each year is very difficult due to the amazing game selection, but Link to the Past will always have a special place in my heart. Thanks to all the runners for years of entertainment, to the community for millions in donations to a good cause, and good luck to Glan. Zero blue balls? My God, Hopefully. What a generous <laughs> donation. <laughs> Hopefully. Yes. <laughs> so this uh, this next room where we're going to wind up getting a heart piece, we're actually going to set up for another hook push this time to just uh, fly across the screen going north to get to the Meyer Hut. But there's actually a reason why we're doing this one first, and then we're going to go to the Kakarika Well after. There's actually a variable that we haven't really talked about much that actually governs whether or not you fall through the floor or get pulled out of the floor. It's called EG Strength. And it just so happens that the Meyer Hut, which we will go to immediately after this, sets it to weak, which means we don't go through the floor. But then Kakarika Well sets it to strong, which means we do. And again, this is one of those uh, secondary rooms, which means that when we exit here, we'll actually be right outside of the Blinds Hut again. And this, this push is pixel perfect. Like, if you're one pixel off that wall, you don't make it. Yeah, same thing actually went for the uh, the push to get to the Pyramid Fairy. That one was also pixel perfect. So, 
notes. You're doing a lot nice of little things happening here. with all that. And to get Link into that room, Glan had to tap right to push Link to the left off of the wall. <laughs> yeah, the, co the collision in this game works in some strange ways. It it does its best. <laughs> it does its best. And really, it is pretty good if you're not trying to break it. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the whole game's pretty good if you're not trying to break it. It just kind of <laughs> falls apart if you try. Yeah, but it is still amazingly resilient, even though it does break. <laughs> it gets to continue chugging along, even with all our nonsense. Yeah. So finally, we're going to go to our next dungeon after we got a lot of items. And next up, we've got Skull Woods. Um... The first thing we're going to do is grab the big key. We do need the pro the uh, main dungeon item out of here, the fire rod. Uh, but we are going to use a few glitches to speed up the process. Normally, you've got to go get the big key from a room that's really annoying to push a statue into the right spot. But here, we're going to use Smarty Transition Corruption to load the room above us, which that chest holds the big key. And there it is. But it also affects what transitions are going to happen from that room, which puts us right next to the big chest. It's all very nice and handy. However, our uh, camera is broken, so we do have to exit and then re-enter, because that fixes our camera. Oh, okay. Next, we've got another little push that we're actually going to use only to go into EG. Uh, but one of the interesting things about it is we do have to bomb jump across this gap, and there are plenty of different ways to do it, but the bonk is relevant. It winds up setting a value in memory just so that the uh, hook push works more Small reasonably. Really <laughs> conspiring against me here. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, next, we're just going to head over to uh, Helmosaur King, not Mothula, because it's way faster to do dungeons in a completely different order. Now, the game thinks we're in Skull Woods, but we are going to get that crystal, even though we're beating the Helmosaur King from Palace of Darkness. Again, that dungeon ID that happens whenever you enter the underworld is very important for things like this. But one thing that's interesting even further on top of that is that since we're collecting the crystal from the Palace of Darkness boss room, it'll actually spit us out at the Palace of Darkness entrance on the overworld, which makes it very easy to then enter Palace of Darkness and then do other things. You also see Glan place a Samaria block here. This is so that he can get Link into a pushing animation before catching the crystal. Uh, this makes the shield not get rendered and winds up saving a few frames during the crystal cutscene. And now we've got more time for donations. Yay, awesome. Okay, all right. I love how broken this game is. It's amazing. <laughs> <Me too>. okay. <laughs> also, we have um, $10 from Anders who says, Glan is an amazing gamer who always showcases the coolest glitches. Did I also mention that he's one of the best friends a person could have? No matter what, Glenn has been by my side wearing a flannel and supporting me. <laughs> Thank you. Now he's out here hook pushing and stuff. That's pretty cool. Did I mention that Link's uncle was an apple farmer? Hi, Glenn, Tajso, Chex, and Max, who's probably behind Chex. Much love to you all, Jersey. <laughs> uh, thank you, Anders. <laughs> but one more? That's adorable. Thanks, Anders. Yeah. Awesome. Or actually, maybe, maybe not. Okay. I think, yeah, that... that we'll, we'll, that have just, we'll have more time. We'll have another one real short. Yeah. Okay, real short one. Okay, then $50 from Breakfast Bunny who says, A Link to the Past gives me such amazing nostalgia. Good luck, Glenn. Love you, GDQ. All right, so we, we just went into EG again. Uh, and we're actually going to that very same room that we kicked out to go get the hammer earlier. It did happen to be the same room that holds Mothula because we have this multi-directional conveyor that happens. Uh, and that just winds up being what merges the layers together. However, Mothula has some his own quirks that happens. Uh, Mothula doesn't like taking damage from spikes. And the way this game is coded, the oh, gold sword does the same damage that spikes do. So in order to actually damage Mothula, we have to poke him. This is uh, so tricky pretty as much <laughs> content as it could be with a capital C. Yeah. The, <laughs> the boss of Skull Woods is not Mothula. The boss <laughs> is the room. <laughs> but actually, this crystal that we have now is for Palace of Darkness because that's what we just entered. So we got the Skull Woods crystal out of Palace of Darkness. Palace of Darkness out of Skull Woods. More donations. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. We have $500 from Running With Speed. He says, hey everyone, it's the directors of the new documentary, Running With Speed here, and we are thrilled to be sponsors of AGDQ 2023. 
Four years ago, we fell in love with the incredible passion of this community and set out to create a definitive documentary. This week, our film is finally available and we couldn't be more thrilled with the response. Running With Speed is narrated by internet legend Summoning Salt, and during AGDQ, $1 for every sale is going to the Prevent Cancer Foundation in donations like this. Thank you so much. Oh, I'm so excited to watch it. Me too. I haven't seen it yet. <laughs> Alrighty. <laughs> so next up, uh, we're going to clear right. Swamp Palace. And uh, to do that, we're actually going to go to Desert Palace, as one does. Because that makes sense. To clear the wettest dungeon, we go to the driest place. <laughs> so here, we're actually going to... Uh, we're going to gloss over a few things here, but uh, next up, in order to actually get to the boss of Swamp Palace, we have to do a glitch that's called Death Hole. Now, put simply, Death Hole is just causing the uh, transition from falling in a hole and causing a death at the exact same time. Uh, running into the Vulture there is very important because we need to have our health set to a very specific value. Bombs only do a quarter heart of damage, which doesn't even show up on the HUD. And the Vulture also does a quarter heart of damage. So using those two together, plus some extra damage, like from this Vemos here and a Devalent, as we'll see later on, uh, makes us be in range of taking a death. Now, the funny thing about Death Hole is that it is a frame-perfect glitch. We do have setups to make it easier, but uh, it has to happen on the exact same frame. Now, what winds up happening from that is it actually loads the room that corresponds to whatever hole we fall into. By the way, yes, now there are holes because we use the Samaria block there. Uh, you can't see them. They exist, as you will see in just a moment. But right now we have loaded a room that is one room to the left of Argus. Also, Link is invisible, but when he transitions to the right, he'll become yeah. visible again and will be right in the Argus room. Now, as far as Argus is concerned, uh, normally you need to use the hookshot to pull off the puffs one by one by one uh, to get into the second phase, but Argus doesn't really care about that if he goes off screen. He considers his puffs dead when he's not on the same screen as them. So he enters phase two and doesn't go back, and we can kill him quickly. Now, after that, we're also going to set up some insula, including a, uh, a block and doing a dash dust before the heart, and then getting a missile oh, block and filling up all the slots with everything, and it didn't quite work. Darn it. <laughs> Hopefully we'll see it done uh, later. Yeah, I don't know why that didn't work. Might have been Probably a slot eight block or something. Yeah, but normally uh, what we wound up trying to do there was skip the fanfare. It saves uh, almost 10 seconds for that. Uh, now we've got another hook push, and we're actually going to go visit Mothula again, which is kind of funny. He's dead, but the dungeon doesn't care. All it matters is that you enter a room that has a boss, but that boss is dead. So as soon as we enter there, we the crystal just falls from the sky. And I'm going to be grabbing the wall. So same thing as in Palace of Darkness, just to get rid of the shield. So the cutscene's slightly faster. And, uh, and we're good for more slightly donations. less time for donations. <laughs> <laughs> slightly less time. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go then. Um, let's do a hundred dollars from uh, CVPCS who says had to donate during a link to the past hundred percent. This is one of my all-time favorite games, and I always love seeing it on GDQ. Good luck to the runner. Let's kick cancer's butt and get those Arceus incentives, which are coming along very well. Keep getting those donations in for those as well. Yeah. Mm, sure. One more. Sure. This is the longest cutscene. <laughs> we have five. Okay, okay. Five thousand dollars from Penderin. Amazing, amazing. He says, "Are we there yet?" And a hundred dollars from Silver Marquise, who says, "It's dangerous to go alone. Take this. Let's go." All right, so we actually perform a console reset there uh, because when we went and got the Bombos medallion from the tablet, it wound up setting some values in memory that have to deal with drawing uh, graphics that we actually don't want for what's going to come up later. Yeah, but first we go to Tower of Hera. Uh, normally third dungeon of the game. Um, since it's so quick to reach from the mountain cave and glitch categories, we tend to just kind of do it whenever. I I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> we kind of just do it whenever it's convenient, and now is when it's convenient, so. Uh, we're gonna yeah, go out of bounds really quick. Elevator. Yeah, I'll let you explain it. <laughs> the um, pot that Glenn just jumped in is normally leads us to a fairy room, and uh, we 
normally access it from the very top of the dungeon, but we were able to get there from the very first floor, which makes it quite a nice shortcut to the very top. Okay, Moldorm is... He woke up and chose violence. <laughs> yeah, that was kind of close there. Let's see if Glenn can get the uh, the fanfare skip. Okay, there. That's what should have happened we before go. as well. <laughs> you just awesome. skip the whole cutscene. Which is like 14-ish seconds. But we have more business in Harem. Yeah. We're going back in. Yeah, next up, we're actually going to go fight the wizard. The main wizard that uh, Ganon has been using as a puppet. Uh, we actually do that by doing what we call a door juke. Uh, when you're holding an item while in a doorway and try to move, it tries to push Link onto very certain positions. And we can actually abuse this to go over the transition line that normally exists in this doorway and hit the transition from the other side, which winds us moving uh, one room over to the left, which happens to be inside Aghanim's tower, which is on top of Hyrule Castle. And we can use that to go right into the, the camera's bathroom. broken, so you now, can't really the, tell, but that's where I was. Yeah. Can you just go through the wall, yeah, please? And, uh, no? Come on, Link. The, these these are supposed to be flimsy walls here. Oh, my God. Uh, so he, actually he, coming, he, he coming upped his security budget. <laughs> <laughs> coming from Tower of Harrow, those slopes are actually uh, at the top of the room that we just dashed through. They're usually a lot worse, but for some reason, they just wound up being a little stronger there. All right, that's one. It's already oh, not, one. not zero, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so with Aghanim, uh, it's an RNG-based fight. He throws an orange ball and then chooses a 50% chance of throwing blue balls or an orange ball. We just got three in a row. So he goes orange first, then either blue and orange for three throws, and then does a lightning attack that Clan just skipped, and then we go and repeat the cycle. So we're at three balls right now. The maximum you can get is 15, assuming you don't miss any shots. Mm -hmm. So let's see how many we well, get Well, it's today. not 15. We're already at three. Four. So when he does the lightning attack, I'm going out to the right there. Might be too late now. No, it's fine. If I just scroll him off screen a little bit, he ends the cycle slightly faster. It saves like 0.7 seconds or something. Yeah, but he has to actually have started the lightning attack, so it's kind of a precise yeah. timing for it. That was four, I think. Yeah. Which it is a fight a lot more than worse than average, but you know, you take whatever you can get from this guy. We've got time for a donation or two while Sahasrila is talking to us. Alrighty, we have a $150 anonymous donation who says that uh, my husband and I grew up playing and loving A Link to the Past, so we're letting our boys stay up late to watch this speed run. <laughs> Thanks to all the runners and crew for putting on this awesome marathon. We lost two family members to cancer this uh, last year, so this cause is close to our hearts. Let's make cancer a thing of the past. I get it. I got it right at the end there. <laughs> and we have a $500 anonymous donation saying Zelda hype. Zelda hype. <laughs> we'll be seeing Zelda pretty soon, actually. Right. Yeah, it's not too far away from here. Uh, up next, we're actually going to flute to the mountain uh, well, to go I'm and get the quit, but... heart piece. Oh, okay. We're, we're going to the mountain anyway, using that very helpful save and quit point that the old man mm -hmm. gave us. But we're actually going to do something that we call a funny auto walk thing. Uh, for some reason, when you're on the overworld and you cause a transition while being just barely off the edge of the screen, uh, Link just decides to walk halfway across it. It's funny. It's weird. He just walks by himself. So it's the funny auto walk. Funny thing. auto walk thing. <laughs> <laughs> Coined by the great Super Sketch. <laughs> and uh, nice eight bomb yeah. spawn. Yep. By the way, uh, I probably don't need it. All right, so here we're actually kind of performing a screen wrap. Uh, we're actually able to dash over the overworld transition, and transitions on the overworld happen based off of Link's global coordinates. Uh, the reason we did that is to skip over a screen as well as to despawn sprites on the overworld. Normally, there's a bunch of leaves on top of that tree that are very laggy when you bonk them down, but we get to skip I that. I love that skip. <laughs> yeah, it only saves like a second, but it's pretty cool. Yeah. So now we're headed back up to Death Mountain to grab the other medallion off the tablets. 
And incidentally, did you know that clouds are made of water? Yeah. Couldn't tell from seeing it there, but you can you can yeah. uh, splash in them. But we're yeah, some of them are even yeah. deep water. Actually, you'll probably see as I dash over here, I'll like splash through some shallow water. Yeah, it's just one of those weird things that you wouldn't have expected the clouds to be made of water because you're never supposed to reach them, but they are anyway. Yeah, I mean, clouds are made of water. So you see I'm kind of dashing through some shallow water there. That was too far away. Well, there you go, now you got to see if the clouds are made of water. And I can't swim in them. <laughs> yeah, we don't have the flippers yet. Yeah, or whatever oh, lets you swim in flippers. clouds. I mean, they're right here. I could go get them. Now nah, we've got a few other things to do first. Okay, fine. <laughs> Getting another quick warp here. Very nice. So now we're going to be heading into Turtle Rock. And we won't be there very long. I mean, we kind of will, but not really. <laughs> So first, first we need to grab the mirror shield, which means we do need to grab the big key since we don't have one for Turtle Rock yet. But if we load the contents of, contents of a small chest into a big chest, uh, we can open it, and then we can open it again if we yeah, want. Yeah, I can get, you know, two big keys. <laughs> as many keys as you want. Only one really matters, but just the fact that it does that is just funny. <laughs> so here Now for the actual contents of the yeah. chest, the mirror shield. And then we get to our blue potion usage, which uh, is what we call a Yuzuhara's Bottle Adventure, or YBA. And with using a blue potion in this specific door here, uh, it causes what's called a submode conflict, which is two submode things happening together, which are like reading a sign or drinking a potion, causing a transition. It's actually what happened with uh, Death Hole, which wound up doing what it did. And hopefully if we get this, we will pull up the flute menu. Now, normally, like this. <laughs> flute only works in the overworld, but uh, what happens if we use the flute in the underworld? Oh, uh, bad go. things. Or in our case, well, they're good things. Well, I wouldn't say bad, oh, but... Okay. Well, that's... Yeah. Uh-oh. That's a little uh-oh. quite enough money there, but... Yeah, the, the flute does kind of work. Uh, it doesn't place us on the overworld, but to a corresponding location in the underworld. And now Link is obeying completely different collision compared to everywhere else uh, that, you know, enemies or his objects would interact with. So here we're going to try to fight Land Molas. And we have to be careful here because there is a solid wall south in the south half of this room that we cannot cross. And if we don't grab the heart from Land Molas, the boss isn't considered defeated, so we kind of have to wait for him to cooperate. Yeah. There we go. We can see Glenn clinking his sword on the invisible wall. Yeah, and, and this is actually why we had to reset the game after getting the Bombos Medallion, because the bits of memory that it messed up wound up putting a solid collision elsewhere in what this is, which we call Plaid World. Uh, stairs still work, surprisingly. We can pick up pots if we want, but largely walls and such we can ignore. Uh, when navigating through Plaid World, there's actually very specific camera considerations we have to make. Uh, the routes that we take uh, have to make sure that we take the transitions well enough that everything stays synced. Otherwise, we aren't able to do all that we need. And largely what we're trying to do is a boss rush. We just killed Land Molas, and now we're headed over to Trinex. He's right here. You see his legs? Oh, that's bad. <laughs> Luckily, even if he ices the floor, I just get to ignore it. Yeah, different collision and all. It's also very trippy that kind of the background of the room moves whenever he moves. It's very weird and disorienting. Yeah. It's very strange. <laughs> Funny property so, about this uh, screen is that we can pick up the part as it spawns from the center of the screen mm -hmm. uh, and then a subtitle above. Yeah. And there's yeah. no music so because of... I don't know the specifics of how the music is implemented, but it's something about like it can't play an overworld song when you're in the underworld. Something like that. But yeah. it's actually very advantageous right for us that there's no music. 
Mm. Yeah, you, you saw Glan line up for a very specific cue there, just so that he can dash through all the eyeballs. This slime that's around Vitreus is the same kind of collision as like a spike floor, but since that's the collision of the underworld, we get to ignore mm. it. <laughs> now, since our dungeon ID is Turtle Rock, we'll get the Turtle Rock crystal here. And because there's this glitch with the music, it just skips playing the fanfare and we go straight into the crystal cutscene. Uh, and what a lovely cutscene. So you can get a couple <laughs> donations in. <laughs> Alrighty, let's let's get it. Okay, we have two hundred dollars from a pink to the last. I love that. He says it's my ten year anniversary of watching ATDQ, and I'm still not tired of seeing Lonk save Hyrule. <laughs> Keep it up, Glenn, and let's beat cancer. We must have a hundred dollars from Rascal Rascal Nick. He says another awesome ATDQ. Thank you to all the runners and staff. So glad to see this a link to the past run. Let's get one more. $100 from D-Ray, who says, Link to the past, 100%. This will be amazing. Let's all enjoy the last hours of HEDQ. The only thing left now is hype. So yeah, you can see we popped out of Misery Mire there thanks to being in the vitreous boss room when collecting the crystal, which, again, makes it very easy to now have that Mire dungeon ID so that we can go grab the Mire crystal. Uh, it's going to do another like hook push into EG. Yeah. Oh, no. Uh, hey, hopefully this works. It should. I don't think you did anything to mess up any values okay. there. Uh, it's fine. No? It's not fine? Were you too close to the wall with that boomerang there? Now you do it right against, and then... Sets in. Hmm. Should work. Okay. There it goes. Nice backup. Yeah, this is a very complicated glitch. Yeah, there's a lot of little memory values that we've taken the time to try to figure out what they do and how to set them most efficiently. But now we're in the Trinex boss room, if you can't tell. It doesn't quite look the same as we just saw. Yeah, this but... is the upper right room associated with it, basically the upper right quadrant, where the boss room is normally the bottom left. And catching that crystal while invisible is no easy feat, yeah. too. <laughs> we get another couple donations here as well. Yeah, sure thing. We have $250 from Chloe Aliana. He says, uh, a Link to the Past is a favorite in our house. I'm so glad to see it run as it's my son's favorite game. Here's to a great run for a great cause. Praise the Triforce. <laughs> we also have um, uh, $100 from Magical Savant saying, I lost my dad to lung cancer on January 4th and mom to breast cancer three and a half years ago. Needless to say, I hate cancer as much as Zelda and Link hate Ganon. Take this donation and send cancer to the dark world forever. All right, so next up, we've got ourselves another funny auto walk thing to get off of Death Mountain here, which puts us right next to the Circle of Rocks where we get the Quake Medallion, which is, I think, the last baby uh, we have. Yeah, or you could just not throw it in the circle. <laughs> that works, I think. Actually, it doesn't. Oh, wait, no, we have, we have flippers after yeah, this. This is one of the last <laughs> items we get. You know, we just beat Turtle Rock, and now we get a Quake, to... which normally you need to enter Turtle Rock. Yeah, I actually forgot to mention it for the uh, Plaid World segment, but in order for us to be able to fight all the bosses there, we actually had to not have flippers and be able to splash into the deep water. So that's why we're getting them so late into the run. I felt like that was going to hit me. The uh, Zor's domain screen is kind of infamous in no major glitches runs because it's one of the longest screens in the game. Yeah, it's very even difficult. Even in this category, too. it's difficult. Yeah. It's it's not even that it's difficult, it's just long and there's not really a good way to skip yeah. it. I didn't get the backup rupees. Uh, oh, oh, yeah. That's important. <laughs> uh, well, now we're going on improv, I guess. <laughs> I'll get back of escape. Are you thinking back of escape? Yeah. The 
Would you like any donations sure. while you're improving? Sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we have three thousand dollars from Hempuli. Oh my goodness. Um, Hempuli says had to donate during a childhood favorite. Good luck on the run and the rest of the event from Baba and Co. Thank you for another great event. There are lots of interesting sounding runs to catch up on. We've also got $50 from Fun Dad. I bet they're pretty fun. Okay, <laughs> they say for some reason, I thought I'd be watching a regular 100% link for the past run right now, but I should have known better since this is one of the last runs of AGDQ 2023. Thanks to Glenn for showing me things that make me realize I have no idea what this game can do. <laughs> Let's aim for 3 million. Get some little bonus content here. You know what? Let's do this. Getting some bonus rando right, strats. Yeah. Yeah, getting some water walk. That that's one way to speed up Zora's domain. So yeah, the, the game does check for whether or not Link has the Moon Pearl whenever he exits the underworld. And uh, if he does, then he gets set into a standing state, which is very helpful if he was just swimming. So we just swam to get the flippers, no big deal. That's how it goes. It, so I was supposed to get 500 rupees uh, before entering Clad World, but unfortunately I move very slightly incorrectly and kind of got screwed out of that. But it's all back to oh, normal yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, Clad World allows you to infinitely collect rupees. But any left or right input ends it. Pretty much. Left, I think, is more dangerous. But So we just got our second last hard piece there, and we have pretty much one item left to get other than that, which is the last bottle. And that's just under the bridge here. So we can just, you know, walk through the barrier. It, it's not there. Hook dash, well, hook dash or spin speed. It's kind of the same state, but yeah. they both wind up doing the same thing for us. Making slopes matter less than they already do. Do a quick save and quit out of there. Uh, you can't flute on that screen, so. You just save and quit. And then, then for the last heart piece, we have another funny auto walk thing. Yeah, very funny. Normally we are expected to to swim through the dark world uh, lake and then mirror onto this lone island with no other access. But the, we can simply walk to it. Yeah, the funny auto walk thing just barely reaches. And then we go into our last dungeon, Ice Palace. So once again, we will be Entering EG. Who saw it coming? For a long time, this dungeon was sort of the same in major glitches and restricted major glitches, but through the new EG tricks, we can save 10 seconds here. Yeah, now it's different in all the world sets. It's just interesting. Yeah, even no EG. Yeah, the no EG route is very hard. <laughs> yeah, and Hoda Ruby showed it off last year. Shoutouts to Hoda Ruby for doing a lot of glitch yeah. routing for Hoda Ruby categories. actually made the most recent updates to the route of this category. I hope that worked. Okay, it did. So there we do a weird shot um, to the blocks to end up just above the hole, so we immediately fall down. At I'm surprised yeah, that actually, actually works. <laughs> yeah, falling in the hole there actually moves us down by two rooms at once, which most holes in Ice Palace don't do that. <laughs> and it's a very vertical stage, so being able to skip any amount of it is yeah, nice. Yeah, for a long time we never thought that EG would be faster here, but... Yeah, the, the entrance is all the way up at the top of the quilts of the underworld and cold stairs near the bottom. Uh, we could wrap around, but if we do that, then the sprites will be desynced and then we can't fight cold stair, so that doesn't work. So cold stair's uh, dead. Gold sword kills him really fast. 
And I used the Samari block again for that small frame saver, and uh, you get a couple more donations. Awesome! We have $25 from Skytso, who says, had to donate during Link to the Past, one of my favorite games of all time. Oh, hey, glitches! I know some of these. Wait, did he just go through the wall? <laughs> we also have $50 from Dr. Dave MD, who says, there was once a hero named Link. His game has broken V-Sync. Glan used it with style to file his game file with 100%. Don't blink. Congratulations, everyone, on another incredible event. <laughs> All right, we just have a couple of bosses left. Uh, once again, we're going to go into EG, and uh, we're going to go fight the other wizard, who is the same wizard, but more so. Yeah, there's three of him now. And yeah. so, and luckily he doesn't care what dungeon you fight him in. He has no prize to give us, so we can just enter there from anywhere else. And he just happens to be right next to the entrance of Ice Palace. Yeah, so we don't have a big key here. We never got Ice Palace big key, so I'm going to use another stuck push here. Uh, that's a uh, okay. Yeah, that looked. Double miss slot. All right, cool. So that one's a slightly different stuck push, but it works very much the same way as the others, just slightly different execution mm -hmm. for it. So there's three Aghanims now, so naturally we call it Aghanim 2. <laughs> uh, cool. yeah. This fight's pretty tricky. Um, you can kill him faster because yeah, you, you got to be good at geometry. Three for this one. shots, but uh, it's very hard to react to the RNG. There's like thousands of different patterns you can give. It's all reactionary. Uh, that was pretty good. I think that was three cycles. Yeah, nice fight. Which is generally what you want to aim for. Two is pretty rare. And we can't... Yeah, that one is completely RNG whether yeah. or not you get it. We can't walk through that diagonal wall, can we? No, not with the no, ice tile set. because it's ice palace yeah. tile set. <laughs> so now, there's one thing left, which is to beat Ganon. And you might be thinking, hey, with all these glitches, why can't we just not fight Ganon? Well, we can, but we want to fight Ganon because it's more fun. So that's that's a rule in the category. And is it really 100% if you don't beat Ganon and truly save Hyrule? And Glenn has Gold Sword. Red mail, 20 hearts, and silver arrows, which are required to defeat Ganon in a normal playthrough, and we will be using them as well, because it's fast. So phase one and two already done. Yeah, it only takes six hits per phase to move on to the next one. Now Ganon gets to do a coin flip on whether or not he warps or stays put. Uh, we need to hit him four times, once for each side of the arena to fall down. Yeah, so this is like another RNG factor. Uh, ooh. Ooh, nice. Oh, okay, that was bad. Well, I think I can get a double here. Yeah, it should be double. So you can get multiple hits as long as he doesn't hit the side of the arena. So now he's dead, and that is that is the run. Time will be coming up as soon as I touch the entrance to the Triforce room here. Nice run. And time. GG's. Ugh. Oh. That was that was fun. Looks like it was a went a little off the rails. Th there we there were a couple track. off the rails bits <laughs> and cool things that didn't get shown, but I think it went pretty well. <laughs> and you got to show more cool things by mm -hmm. using backup strats. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm really glad I got to show this off as well because the glitch categories have all heavily evolved since the last time I ran uh, all dungeons in 2021. So. Got to show off all that evolution. Really cool stuff. Yeah, I'm sure there's going to be more mm -hmm. to come. That there always is. I, I, yeah, I would not be surprised if this category reaches sub out yeah. at some point. <laughs> it's the only one to not so far. Just has so much to mm -hmm. do. 
Yeah, so I guess I'll give a few shout outs. Um, if you are interested at all in this game, either like this or, you know, no major glitches, uh, you know, join the Discord uh, linked on speedrun.com and we're all very friendly and helpful there. Um, also want to shout out um, all the uh, glitched community of the game. So Todd Stone checks here and everyone else. And I mentioned earlier, Hoda Ruby um, did the most recent routing for this category. Always big shout outs to yeah. Yuzuhara for yeah. finding more than half the glitches that we even and use. And of course, yeah, Yuzuhara just, <laughs> you know, we wouldn't be anywhere close to this without him. So yeah, I think that's it for me. If either of you have anything else to say. No, thanks so much. Yeah, thanks so much for having us. And uh, keep donating, the event's not over quite yet. <laughs>
Okay, listen, we also need to talk about something awesome that is GDQ related, and that is Hotfix. Now, speedrunning isn't just limited to AGDQ and SGDQ. Did you know you can watch every weekday night at 7 p.m. Eastern and weekends at 1 p.m. Eastern here on Games Done Quick with our Hotfix shows? They're awesome. I even host a Hotfix show. I have so many friends who host Hotfix shows. They're amazing. I love all of the shows coming up. Plus, not only is my show, we have a, a cool announcement for that. We have a fun name change to fit the theme of the show a little bit better. Once known as That's Never Happened Before, we have a new name coming up. So feel free to check out the next episode if you want to hear about that. Uh, but my show is all about glitches and such. So feel free to come see that for some speedrun glitches. But did you know that we also have our very own Kizaron who hosts a show as well on GDQ Hotfix? They will be commenting on the um, Legends Arceus run. So I needed to make sure we shouted out Keys and uh, Jay Hobbs's show, which is called The First Step. That's every Thursday. You can check out their show. If you're like, how do I get into speedrunning? I don't know. I'm kind of nervous about trying to run something for the first time. That's what they do. It's amazing. We have so many amazing hotfix shows. Please go check it out. You can go to gamesunquick.com for more info on that. Um, and if you want an intro to hotfix, we have a, at 1 p.m. Eastern tomorrow. Tomorrow. So don't worry, not the marathon stuff won't be all over. 1 p.m. Eastern tomorrow, you can check out our intro to GDQ Hotfix special, which is really cool. You'll see a few short runs from a group of our very own showrunners, which is amazing. So please go watch the Hotfix shows. They're so good. You can catch up with them on the YouTube channel as well. We have plenty of content out there. Um, yeah, it's been an honor to be a part of Hotfix. It's been so fun. So definitely, definitely check that out. Also. We need to get ready for that Arceus run. I'm so excited. So let's uh, stretch, get some water. We'll take a quick break and we'll be right back.
And welcome back to Awesome Games Done Quick Online 2023. I hope you're all enjoying it. Oh my gosh, this day has been amazing. This week has been amazing. You all are amazing. And thank you for your donations. Let's get in one more real quick. $50 from Gameplays Jace saying, here we are at the end of another week, another successful marathon. Congratulations to all the runners, staff, and viewers across the world. We made it. Now let's fight a god. This donation goes to attacking and dethroning Pokemon God. Speaking of, this is like your last time to get in. Oh, options for Cyndaquil's name. I see some more donations have come in for that. Oh my goodness. Um, plus, we are over $25 in. Now that is over 10% of uh, the incentive that we need for attacking and dethroning Pokemon God. We're also over $35,000 out of the 100 we need for the glitch exhibition. So you all are doing a great Keep going. And uh, in the meantime, we are going to go to an interview now to talk with Mitch Flower Power about the upcoming Super Mario Bros. 3 run with our very own AGDQ DM ADEF. Hello, everybody at AGDQ 2023 online. That's right. I'm your DM, I guess. Hi. Uh, I am joined by the ever wonderful Mitch Flower Power. Mitch, how are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm amazing. I'm better now. Right on. Uh, I'm excited to talk to you about this run. Just a couple of questions here, so let's get right yeah, into sure. it. Yeah, sure. So, Mitch, surprisingly, the last time we saw Warpless for Super Mario Brothers 3 at a mainline GDQ was AGDQ 2015. That was eight years when ago. When you told me, I, I didn't believe you at first. I was like, what? That, that doesn't sound right. I know. And I remembered all, the, we uh, did all Forts runs. Yeah, a lot of runs of SMB3 have happened since then, but that's the last time we saw Warpless, which is probably the most competitive, you know, you know, uh, massive category in SMB3. So, Mitch, I'm curious, what are the major changes that have happened since last time we saw this? Well, actually, um, the early hammer has made, like, such a massive role in um, Mario 3 in terms of, like, can you get the world record or can you not? Um, we always got to worry about the hands. Uh, don't forget, anyone out there, you're still going to see the hands tonight. They're still going to screw over my run. Um, there's a couple of different in-level strategies, and uh, when we use items at specific times, I've kind of changed. There's been a little bit of a route change definitely since 2015. Um, right. But one of the biggest things to note that I'm going to be trying to demonstrate during uh, this performance is something called early hammer manipulation. Okay. Yeah. Can, can we get a little, like a an elevator pitch as to what this is? Sure, sure. So what's going to happen is that I'm going to use uh, a metronome and start the run at a very specific time and do all of this controlling things. Things you guys are going to learn when I do my run, but in uh, a small example, I'm going to be controlling a lot of different things uh, to get the Hammer Brothers to do what I want them to do. You know, I've been running this game for like 12 years and they've never done anything I want them to do, and now it's my turn. Now they're going to do what I want them to do. Now we... We got to force them. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly it. We have to force them. So, uh, Mitch, I think Saturday of a GDQ is uh, a moment when a lot of people and uh, gamers at home, I'm sure this might apply to you, where where people are like, you know, maybe I should try speedrunning. And first of all, I would like to say right up front, you should. It's a super approachable hobby, and each individual game has crafted a really wonderful, lovely, like, sub-community. But Mitch, you are as seasoned as they come. I mean, you've been in the speedrunning community for well over a decade. <laughs> I'm curious what your advice would be to a new runner as far as, you know, handling a long grind or, or, or uh, uh, approaching speedrunning? Well, for one, there's always, there's always going to be ups and downs. And, you, you know, you're just going to have to kind of take it slow. And if you seem that you're really frustrated and you're not seeing any progress, you definitely got to take breaks. Give your hands a break. Take some breaks. There's times where I took maybe six months away from Mario 3. And, of course, I was afraid that I was just going to get worse. And I did. But the de-rust and coming back, you're fresh and new, and um, you end up just doing better once you take a nice refresh. So I, I'd say lots of breaks and go easy on yourself. It's hard for all of us, you know. Don't don't get so frustrated and oh, it's not working in a week or something like that. You know, I'm I've been doing Mario three for a long time and I still have not hit my full potential. So it's uh, just go easy on yourself, and I, I try and tell myself that to this day. It's a great answer, Mitch. Thank you. You know, like with any of life's uh, 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 greatest things, it's an uphill battle and the journey is half the fun. Yeah, right? I mean, everyone um, has negative thoughts about their progression and skill level. And we always yeah. compare to other people, you know what I mean? There's always somebody better than you, right? But it's just work at your own pace, 
and learn at your own, you know, slow process. Maybe it's a fact. There, hey, there's some people out there that learn really fast. <laughs> they just get yeah. it right away. So lucky them. Yeah, but don't be worried about your progress pace. It's a great yeah. answer, Mitch. Um, so to wrap things up on the run, though, you know what? What are you excited about? What's like one thing you're really excited to show off? I am really excited to show off the depth of early hammer manipulation. It is um, an extremely complicated thing, and uh, we're gonna do a little bit of an explanation of everything that's happening. But I'm very excited to see how that's gonna go because doing early hammer without the manipulation is like a one percent chance of ever happening, and the manipulation brings it up to like a twenty. On good days, it could be like a 30% chance of happening and stuff. So I'm excited for that. And nobody has ever gotten no hands at a GDQ. At least I don't think so in terms of like a, a standard warpless run. So I would very much like to get no hands. <laughs> that would be pretty good. That would good. be cool, right? <laughs> um, so shifting topics just a little bit, Mitch. Uh, I, I want to talk about the recent documentary directed by Patrick Lope and Nicholas Moras, Running with Speed. Yes. So... I would love to hear about your involvement in the film. You know, tell me a little bit about this project and your involvement. Well, I'm one of the featured runners um, who they were able to uh, actually come to my home and uh, inter interview me, not just so much on speedrunning, but making a life and a career out of speedrunning and uh, streaming and stuff like that. And the particular roles that uh, GDQ has on effect of speedrunners and, um, some, you know, Sometimes there's like a make or break moment with uh, your speedrun at GDQ mm -hmm. and um, how you handle yourself at home and how you present yourself for uh, speedrunning live in front of an audience, you know, whether it be at home or in front of an event. And the documentary really captures what goes on in the heads of speedrunners and what it's like to be at home on, um, I guess, some of the demons you might have to face, like how maybe your parents feel about it and maybe, you know, you feel like it's a career choice, but it's a dangerous career choice or it's, a, it's such a risk you have to take. And the documentary really capitalizes on showing the world that like this is a legit thing, this is real, and, and speedrunning is happening right now. And it's it's a fantastic documentary. Amazing. Yeah. Um, I, I think it's uh, uh, worth mentioning, everybody, that if you are interested in watching the documentary, uh, if you purchase it right now at runningwithspeed.com, $1 of that purchase will go towards PCF, uh, so you can get a little late-night enjoyment for after the marathon is over, <laughs> of course. Um, but uh, that purchase, I believe, does have to take place before the end of the marathon. Um, my final question on this, though, is, you know, Mitch, like I said earlier, you've been around a long time, about as long as they come. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so I, I'm curious what it meant to you to be a part of something like this that shines a light on our community, which, you know, is really big now. But when you and I got into it, was tiny, yeah. you know, in comparison. Uh, you know, what was it like to share that experience and shine a light on this community? It meant the world to me. I, I struggled so much in my early 20s to find where, where I belong. Like, what community am I part of? Like, what programs in my school am I supposed to do? Like, like where, how am I supposed to like progress into an adult? Like what's my future gonna hold? And like speed running and video games just always held that connection for me. So it was very important that I become a part of this community and do everything I can to like make it, you know, I guess better in my own way or anything that can make me better as a person too. I just, it meant the world. Just the, it, even the opportunity to close out a GDQ like this is like, it's incredible. I can't even, I'm so grateful. It's insane, it's insane, but. Well, Amazing. Uh, everybody, again, the documentary is Running With Speed, narrated by Summoning Salt, uh, Speedrunning's very own historian, I guess. Um, and uh, you should definitely check it out. Um, this was the final interview of the marathon. Mitch, thank you so much for being a part of it. I really appreciate thank it. Thank you. It a delight to get to talk to yeah, you. Yeah, dude, it's always such a good time. Um, I'd like to thank the interview producers who work tirelessly behind the scenes uh, all week long. However hard you think it is to run an online speedrunning marathon 24-7 for a week, it's about a thousand times harder. Um, so I'd, I'd like to thank the interview producers and the producers in general. I'd like to thank the interview team. Uh, I'd like to thank our fearless leader, Jay Hobbs, who has led us through battle many times and we always come out victorious. Um, and uh, I've been ADEF. It's always such a pleasure to get to share these events with all of you. I cannot believe the generosity you all have been showing today alone. Keep those donations coming. There are incentives still to come. Maybe a little something, something for Super Mario Brothers 3 later. Who knows? I'm just saying. Um, and uh, everybody, I've been ADEF. This has been Mitch Flower Power. And uh, I think we've got a prize segment with Scent coming up in just a moment. Oh! 
Yes, hello everybody, for it is I sent the prize wizard. Once again, I have been summoned here as my inventory has magically shifted its stock for I believe the final time. But fear not, for there are still many relics for all of you at home that you might perhaps become the new owners of. I merely ask for a simple donation in return. And I have heard the call of assistance from my friends in the realm of Paldea. Pokemon Legends Arceus requires your donation support. Together, I believe, with my magical wares and your generosity, we could perhaps make it happen. I've opened a realm a portal to Paldea so that perhaps we might engage in some of the relics of the realm. Like these absolutely beautiful charms. Do they convey magical powers? Do they summon ancient beasts? They do nothing of the sort. They are simply beautiful. You can put your keychains on them. However, they are quite wonderful. Thank you to Chaobu, who provided them to my lovely sanctum of prizes. Likewise, with this absolutely beautiful sticker book, it is a book in which you might be able to place all of the adhesive powers that you contain. And it comes with a set of fancy Pokemon stickers for you to place wherever you'd like. They are indeed adhesive. They shall stick to the page. They shall be removed from the page. Such is their power. And for a $10 minimum donation, the power could be yours. We have an excellent number of paintings and prints depicting fierce beasts from the region of Paldea. Like these absolutely beautiful Hisuian Typhlosion and regular Typhlosion prints. Eventually, we will cycle to them. The cycling magic takes some time, but there is no worry from it, for they are absolutely beautiful. Behold pictures of them together, for we have normal Typhlosion and the ghostly Paldean Typhlosion. Magical indeed. A $25 donation sent to us by Crow Party. 20 even. Thank you very much, Crow Party. A party of crows is indeed fearsome, and this artwork is fearsome to match. But... Our look into the world of Paldea is far from over, for Crow Party has sent us many magical artifacts, such as this beautiful Vaporeon playmat. As you can see, it floats through the air as some kind of flying beast. I am quite impressed by its ability. In fact, it can even be vertical. Behold its verticality. Indeed, it is, it is quite a beautiful piece. A $20 minimum donation. But $25 shall get you entered into all of the magical items available for this segment. Also, from Crow Party, who continues to send beautiful paintings of beasts from mythical realms, we have a set of Giratina and Arceus, the god of the Pokemon universe. Currently, I hear there are adventurers on a quest to attack and dethrone Arceus. We must make it happen. It is important that Arceus should fall and that Giratina likewise shall be captured. A noble goal indeed for a $20 minimum donation. From our good friend Chu, we have an absolutely incredible poster of Bowser's army, a fearsome might of creatures, the likes of which I have never seen, such as a Koopa and several smaller Koopas. Perhaps they are related. Perhaps they are even the Koopa children. I do not know. I am, I am merely a prize wizard gazing into distant realms, but perhaps you at home do. A $20 minimum donation for a magical relic that shall depict monsters beyond your imagination. But wait, for it is not the only one sent to us by Chu, for he has also sent another image of this lovely Hisuian Typhlosion. Revel in its ghostly glory. It is absolutely fantastic. But the prizes do not end there, my friends, I assure you, for there are many trinkets and bubbles and magical items that you could win through donation. Items such as this string artwork from Making It Nerdy, 
What does it do, you might ask? Why, it is a finely constructed piece of artwork. The finest string artwork in the land. Made from simple nails and colored string. It combines together precision and artistry. It looks nice on a shelf, basically. It's not that magical of an artifact, but it is very beautiful and therefore worth a $20 minimum donation. Make sure to do so before the end of the marathon. But that is not all, for there are many beautiful pieces of artistry, such as Pearl Pop, who has captured Mario in several of his forms by trapping him within a spell of beads. Indeed, for we have Fire Flower Mario. Running Mario. Mario is a statue. Mario with a raccoon tail. And of course, Frog Mario. I believe this is how Frog Mario moves. Uh, once again, moving through the air. It is quite an impressive form of movement. Be thankful he is trapped within these pearlers. But these pearlers could be yours for a $15 minimum donation. And speaking of trapping Mario, we have a Super Mario Brothers 3 cartridge rehoused in a solid aluminum shell. K-Form and Belate Geeks, the artificiers they are, have used their artificing magic to remove Super Mario Brothers 3 from its normal shell and place it in a much more durable aluminum shell. This shell is what is required to hold Mario down. As you will soon see, Mitch Flower Power will escape the very bounds of existence without the power of aluminum to contain. But I am far from out of prizes to discuss. There are so many more such as this Froki Trifty Arch depicting the three members of the Froki line, a powerful set of warriors indeed, including Froki, Frogadier, and of course, the mighty ninja, Greninja. This set of frogs could be yours for whatever purpose you would like ninja frogs for, for only a $25 minimum donation. Much thanks to Darmok for encapturing them in these canvases for us. Your donation is much appreciated. But again, I am far from out of prizes, for there are so many magical relics to speak of. I must speak highly of one of my absolute favorites. A beautiful replica of the stable of Breath of the Wild, crafted meticulously by the known artificer Sky Berkson, not of metal, not of wood, not of any known normal crafting material, but instead of a material as soft and pliable as paper. This is truly magnificent. And yes, the lights even work. Truly the work of a master artificer. A $100 minimum donation. But do not fret, for this is one of a kind, absolutely. And it could be yours if you donate before the end of the marathon. But wait! For my supplies of prizes are nearly endless. And in fact, there are three truly treasured relics that I have the ability to bestow upon you for a $200 minimum donation. You could receive the legendary Hylian Shield and your choice of replica from the Artificiers over at Heroic Replicas. They make a weapon or artifice for pretty much every situation, and there are 15 magnificent choices to choose from, in addition to this solid stainless steel shield, why it shall block anything that you encounter on your adventures. The Technomancers of Skytech Gaming have provided a Skytech Gaming Azure PC, a strong PC with the land that shall allow you to play video games or whatever it is people who are technologically adept do. I mostly ponder the orb, but you could be pondering the machine. And of course, Minion, show it, bring forth the Fallout Laser Rifle from our friends Cute Monster Props and Vulpin Props. Indeed, flex it, Minion! Flex the rifle for our audience! Excellent work, Minion. It is not easy to flex a rifle this beautiful. It is not easy to create a rifle this beautiful. Thank you so much to our friends at Vulpin and Cute Monster Props. But just to show you that my prize stores are simply limitless, I shall summon an entirely new prize from the realm of prizes. Arise!
The prize is a little desynced from my magic. But do not worry, because behind me is a beautiful rug of Mario from Rip Rugs. We have captured Mario even in rug form. A $25 minimum donation. Thank you, Rugmancer. We may leave now. Yes. All of these prizes and bo okay. <laughs> Oh, th thank you, Sen, so much for those prizes. Oh, my gosh. I was too distracted by the... What was that? What just happened with that Mario? Oh, my goodness. Mario flying in the background. That was amazing. <laughs> Get your donations in if you want that. <laughs> uh, okay, speaking of donations, let's do a $200 donation from um, Haxer Jacks saying, had to donate again for the amazing Legend of Zelda Link to the Past run. Just wow. And then also we have $100 from JD the Bud who says, Pokemon God Takedown? Sign me up. And with that, you all want to see some Pokemon? I would like to see some Pokemon, technically. So I, you know what? Let's hand it on over to uh, Halkyrie for the Pokemon Legends Arceus All Lords Run. Take it away. <laughs> 